Hi everyone, welcome to our live. Um, I'm a few minutes late trying to get organized here, but thanks for joining along. Um, today we are upcycling shutters, wooden shutters that I got from the dump actually I got them for free and if you can find shutters sometimes they're really nice to uh, upcycle at just as is as a shutter but I got a little bit of a hack of how you can if you're a reseller or you want to make some extra cash how you can take these shutters apart and make a lot more money um, this is a really great DIY it's really simple anybody can do it and I'm going to take you through the step-by-steps today and show you how you can turn old shutters into fantastic ornaments. Now, if you are, we are heading into uh, a little bit of a holiday season in a month or so, we've got fall season, we've got Halloween, we've got Christmas, and you can put a spin on this DIY and um, turn them into uh, ornaments or tags for e any of those holidays, especially Christmas. This is a really great DIY to do for Christmas because you can personalize them um, and number one seller. It's fantastic. And you know, if you don't have any shutters or you can't find any shutters, you can also just find some little pieces of wood and do this technique on and do the same thing. So don't panic if you haven't got shutters. I'm just showing you today how you can make these tags from shutters and get all kinds of ornaments from made from them. So we all know um, what to do here when we're on the live. It is so much, it's hot here today, really hot. Uh, and I had to close my window because there's so much noise outside. So I'm overheating here a little bit, but um, you guys know the drill. Let's go into the comments. Let me know where you're watching from because it is fantastic. I got crafters here from all over the world and it's fun just to see everybody pop up and see where they're from. So hot here in South Carolina. I can't imagine. I'm here in Ontario, Canada. It, uh, I think it's like 29 degrees, but it feels like 40 degrees Celsius. I can't remember what, what the conversion is for Fahrenheit, but it's like verge on 100. It's hot. We got New York in here. Hi, we got Dookie. We got Michigan. Um, and I am all about getting right to work. So I'm going to move the camera down on my other tripod and we're going to start right away. So let's go there. Bear with me here while we do the transition. Get you set up overhead so you can see better. Okay, there we go. Hot in North Mississippi. Oh my gosh, everybody is in a warm area today for sure. Thanks for joining along, everybody. We got North Central Indiana. Hot in western New York, 90 degrees. Yes, it is. And I'm taking off my white blouse that I had on here. We're taking that off because I'm really overheated. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about. These are slats from a shutter. Uh, uh, they're really easy to take apart. You can deconstruct them. And then these are all the slats that go down along the shutter. And you can turn these into ornaments. If you're finding an old ratty, um shutter and you don't they're they're a bugger to, to paint so that's why i always like taking them apart because i can actually take make more money taking them apart than taking the time to paint the whole shutter and sell it that way so these had little um tabs that fit in the outside i've just got a pair of pliers and they can you just take your time but see how they snap off really easy and uh you can take those little tabs off and then they're ready to paint and just don't go reefing on it too much, but they do, if you just take your time, they snap off. And now you've got a little piece of wood that we can turn into um, ornaments. Have anybody here ever done anything like this? Made little ornaments? Let me know in the comments. I'm just gonna take these off and then I'll show you what we do next. So these are all ready to be painted. I like to paint these with my homemade chalk paint I find because we're going to do a transfer technique and the technique works best on a chalk painted surface so that's what we're going to do next and you can see how easy these little tabs come off and you're going to have 
bigger shutters, shorter ones. This was a kind of a small, tiny shutter. That's why I got these little uh, slots, but I do have some bigger ones to show you today. And also, if you um, are in the comments and you wanna ask any crafting questions, ask away, now's the time, and I can probably help you out. So I have all kinds of these, and the way um, I price these, they, for me anyways, I usually price these around $5 a piece. So you can imagine how many sl uh, slats there are in a shutter, and if you're getting $5 a piece for each of these, that's a lot of extra cash that works out really well. So here, these are a little bit of a different style of a shutter, and I've painted these with the white chalk paint. Now I left the back, um, just the raw wood, and I just put one light coat of the chalk paint on top of this. Then I took my sander and I just kind of sanded around the edges. It just gives it a nice rustic look. Of course, all these techniques, you can put your own spin on. I'm just showing the techniques and then you can take it from there, whatever your style is. But these are some that are uh, ready to go. So what I do next, let's see what we got here. Um, yeah, it's hot in North Carolina. And Jackie, thanks for catching a live. We got Switzerland in here and Arkansas. Thanks for joining along guys and like if you're, and if you're just joining, make sure you let me know where you're watching from in the comments because it's always fun to see where everybody is. So we've got our Mod Podge mat. Now, if you've been following me along for a while, you know I love this technique. I use it so much. You probably get sick of me talking about it. But if you are a crafter and you're wanting to make some extra cash, make a little bit of money, you have to figure out how to master this technique because the DIYs that you can make and sell is fantastic. So I've got my Mod Podge mat. I've printed off some graphics. Let me see what I've got here. I've got a full sheet. So this is, I have a graphic sheet in my uh, Etsy store. Uh, I got the wrong one here, one second. Those are ones that I have sized. Here it is right here. So I'm using this graphic on this project. This is a graphic that's in my Etsy store. And what I like about this one is each one of these are an extra, are a tag. You can cut these out individually put them on a tag. I put these into Google Docs and I size them to fit my tag. So you just have to size them up and then you can see how they'll fit each one of these. So this is the graphic. I'll put the link, the link is already in the description below uh, for this graphic if you wanna try this DIY out. And uh, if you're a Patreon member, make sure you use your 70% off coupon. And if you're a channel member here, make sure you're using your 50% off coupon and you can grab this graphic and you can see how many different designs you can make just with this one graphic. And so here's an, uh, um, I did a bunch of these cause I was sizing them to fit all the different sizes, but you can see how I put these in Google docs. You have to make sure that you're reversing them because when you're putting it on your piece of wood, it's gonna be flipped over. So see how it's the right way and then it's reversed there. But now if you're buying these off of my uh, Etsy store, one of the files is already reversed, ready to go. So you don't need to worry about that. We got Arkansas, Abington, Niagara. Hi, Carol from Niagara, uh, Texas and LaGrange, Georgia. Thanks for hopping on and joining me for my live today. Okay, so these I've cut and I'm just gonna show you how we're gonna put these on the tags. You don't need very much Mod Podge. This is, these were printed off on my laser printer uh, but you can use an inkjet printer. You don't have to use a laser printer. I just find I do so, ma so many of these that the laser printer actually works better and it's quicker. But if you only, your only option is a uh, lot, uh, inkjet, don't worry. The only difference I find is that you have to take a little bit more time when you're rubbing the paper off and your graphic might be a little bit more of a lighter black color than if you're using a laser printer but definitely can be done. And then you're just gonna make sure you've got it level exactly where you want it, and then push all the bubbles and the wrinkles out of it. And that's it for putting those on. We got London. I am actually heading up London Way tomorrow. I am heading up near Tilsonburg, which I think is near 
London. My son has a motocross race up that way. So we're packing the trailer tonight and we are heading up down the 401 towards London Way. Okay, so you can see I didn't put very much Mod Podge on that. You don't need very much. If you put too much Mod Podge on, Mod Podge is not clear. As you can see, it's a colored, uh, not solution, but a colored paste. So if you put too much on, you're gonna see the whole outline of your graphic when you rub the paper off. So you do, it doesn't take much to transfer it for it. Just put a little bit on and that's all you need. I like this one, be happy. So these are great for resale, as I said before, any time of the year. These, I can put together hundreds and hundreds of these and I would sell all of them. Um, but Christmas time is the best time because people use them as Christmas ornaments. And if you're handy with um, a graphic program like Canva, you can make personalized ones. You can go in and make names and do custom orders and um, put these together and that's a great way of making some extra money too. Cape Britain Island. Hey, do color graphics printed from a laser printer work as well? Yes, they sure do. You can use a colored laser printer and the transfer process will work the exact same. I haven't made the splurge and bought a color laser printer, but that's on my to buy list because I think I would use it lots. So, okay, are you guys ready? I made all of these yesterday. I have all kinds of them. I have them all ready. And uh, we're going to rub the paper off and I'm gonna show you how to do it. So I got some different sizes. This is a bigger one and you can see how I've sized it to fit that size. This is a smaller one. So what we wanna do, I like to drill a hole in the top of them so we can put a little hanger on them when they're done. So I'm gonna do a few of those to show you how I do that. And it's really simple. You just got to drill. And I like to get just an, a block of wood. And I just set it on the block of wood. I hope I got enough room here. I'm not going to bang into my camera. And you're just going to slowly drill a hole through the top. That's it. You've got your tag ready to go. And you can just pick your drill bit to be whatever size string you want to put through. Um, on the top of this and make, your, make sure you're just going slow. You don't wanna go too fast and make sure you've got a block of wood or something that you can drill into. Otherwise, of course, you're drilling a hole into your table or whatever craft surface that you're using. So I've got, let's do one of these big ones. Put a little hole in the top. And you gotta go slow also because you'll split the wood if you go too fast. Now these ones I made pretty big so I don't have a lot of room to drill and I don't want to break through. So I'm just going slow. That one worked good. We got one that says be yourself. There we go. And we'll just keep drilling away. I might as well do all of these while we've got y'all on here. Cause there's people that are new people that are just hopping on too. So I don't want to go too fast into this and then someone's going to miss what we're doing here. So we'll just finish these up. And you can see how quick and fast these can come together. Now those ones that I just did, uh, we wanna set them aside. So you're gonna put all the graphics on these and then you're going to set them aside and let them sit for a day. You don't want to try to rub the paper off right away. It needs time to really dry before you can uh, do that. Um, what surfaces need to be prepped before painting the surface with chalk paint? I think you remember saying glass surfaces. Yeah, so if you're painting a glass, um, a glass jar, I like to use a spray paint primer first on the clear glass and then paint it with the chalk paint. You can paint glass with just chalk paint, um, but I, I find it works pretty good but you do run the risk of it chipping and peeling a little bit. So when you're, when you're um, spraying it with a little bit of primer, it works best. Now, if you're doing this on uh, wood, um, unless it's a laminate wood, if you're working with laminate, you have to put a primer on it first because it, the paint will just rub off. So if it's laminate, you're gonna put a primer and then your chalk paint. If you're just using wood like this, that's raw wood, 
you can paint the chalk paint directly on top of it and it's gonna adhere really well. Hi, Lori, thanks for joining. Okay, so we've just got a little dish of water and I'm gonna show you how easy this is. Now, this transfer technique is not, um, it's not perfect. There's always gonna be little bits and pieces that are gonna rub off and it's a very rustic technique. I have a lot of people that will send me pictures and they'll say, I just tried it and I had a little corner here where some of the, the graphic rubbed off. That is gonna happen. That is what happens with this technique. It's never ever perfect. So if that's what you're looking for, then maybe this technique might not be the right one. You might want to use stenciling or a Cricut or something like that. But if you like that rustic feel, and you don't care that a little bit here and there is gonna rub off, then this is the way to go. So you can see, I just dampened this and you can just start to see the graphics show through. And, and then just, I like to start in the middle in a circular motion and just rub the paper off. I find it really relaxing. I just will work away at these for hours. I've got a bunch of these, one, you know, a bunch of these put together. I'll put a podcast on or, uh, I'll put a YouTube crafting video on my computer and I'll just work away and I'll rub them all off and stockpile these for a craft fair or resell or I'll make some personalized ones for resale and uh, it's a great way to make some extra money and I know they're always gonna sell really well. And the thing about these too is people don't just buy one. I find when I do these at Christmas time, people will buy four or five at a time, especially if they're the personalized ones because they'll buy them for all of their kids or their grandkids. So if you can master this technique and learn how to make your own personalized graphics, you know what I should do? I was just thinking about this as I was just talking away. I should, because I know there are a lot of you that don't know how to use a, a graphic program, I should put a listing in Etsy where I can design your um, your names for you. If, you. if that's something that you think you would be interested in, let me know down in the comments and uh, that might be something I can add to my Etsy store to do custom orders for names for projects like this. So that's, see how easy this is to, now if it starts to get dry, I just dip my finger in the water. You don't need to re-wet the whole thing again. Just go in those areas and just rub it off. But how pretty is this? A slot out of a shutter that we have chalk painted and put a graphic on and created a really cute ornament. I'm gonna do a few of these and then I'm gonna show you how I um, finish these off. So we'll just keep going because I know you guys always have lots of questions on this method and uh, I can answer away any of them. How many of you have tried this technique and have you had success or not had success? Let me know. And let me know where you're watching from. Pop on. Let me know if you're in North America or if you're overseas and where you're watching. And again, you don't need very much water. You can see that I just put a little bit on and then rubbed it off. Also, another thing that I have going on on my channel is my Patreon account. I have a group of crafters over on Patreon uh, and it's, it's such a fantastic group over there. What I do is every new graphic that I list in my Etsy store, you get sent every Friday night at midnight and um, sent right to your inbox. And then you can download them, you can craft with them. There's no copyright issues. You can use them for any of your projects and craft away with them. So if any of you are interested in that Patreon, uh, we'd love to have you over there. I've actually been doing some freebies over there too on top of the graphics. I designed a July calendar that went out in your email. So if you're a Patreon member, hopefully you got your calendar and, um, and this week I have a fun one coming out too. So on top of the graphics, there's always lots of freebies and stuff going on over there. It's $6.99 a month and well worth the money because at the end of the month, I think the last three or four months, I've done almost 30 graphics. 
And so that works out to like 35 cents a graphic and they're listed in my Etsy store for $2.50 a piece. So fantastic deal over on Patreon. That link is down in the description if you wanna join us over there because I love all of my crafters over there and we can share pictures and get inspiration over there too. So you can see that's all rubbed off. That's it, that easy. And I didn't even paint the back of these. You don't have to if you don't want to. I kind of like the rustic feel of it. So I left them unpainted. Plus it cuts down your time on making these. You don't have to spend a lot of time painting the front and the back. And if you're just joining, this is the graphic that I'm using. Uh, every one of these can be turned into a separate tag. And you can see I've sized them to fit. If you're doing this, it has to be reversed, but there is the reverse uh, file in the Etsy store if you want to uh, grab that one. Um, I've tried this technique and I was blown away with the results. Thank you. Lori, I know it is fantastic. If you can figure it out and fool around with this a bit, you can. the possibilities are uh, amazing. And I mean, you guys, Hopefully you don't get sick of me because I put, I love graphics and I throw them on everything and there's just so much potential to make, if, if you're looking to sell your crafts, to do something that's original and not look like something that's from Target or Marshalls or Winners, it, it's more original and um, just the, the feel, it just doesn't look like it's vinyl that's been cut on a cricket, it's just, I love this technique. Um, yes, I have more success with the polyacrylic. Yeah, so you can use the polyacrylic and you are absolutely right, it is faster, it dries faster. And the nice thing about using your polyacrylic when you do a technique like this is you can use it on raw wood um, because it blends in better. I should do a live soon using the polyacrylic and then I'll do the Mod Podge beside it and you guys can see the difference. That's a, Maybe that's a good uh, video for next week, comparing the polyacrylic to the, the Mod Podge. Um, because the polyacrylic, if you've got a piece of raw wood that you wanna keep the wood color but you wanna put a graphic on, works really great. And if But if you're using the Mod Podge to do that, you'll often see the outline of the Mod Podge because it's not a clear, uh, solution where the polyacrylic is. So that's the nice thing about using the polyacrylic. Okay. Uh, would the clear tape method work too? So the clear tape method, I think you're talking about the um, packing tape transfer. So it it's a completely different um, technique because the transfer actually goes onto the packing tape. It doesn't go onto your project, but you could also do the packing tape technique and then glue it onto your um, project. That would work that way too. It's just one of those things. There's so many different ways that you can do it and fool around with it and see what you like and try. But definitely uh, the packing tape transfer is a, a fun one to try too. Now the packing tape transfer will only work with an inkjet. It will not work with a, or will only work with a laser printer. It will not work with an inkjet. So if you're trying that and you're not having any success and you're using an inkjet, that would be why you have to use a laser printer when doing the packing tape transfer. Uh, hi, Evelyn from Orlando. I have, uh, I only have an iPhone and iPad. Is there a program to reverse and resize graphics? Can, can you get Google Docs on your iPad? If you can get Google Docs on your iPad, then you can reverse from there. Um, and I do have a tutorial on how to use Google Docs. So I think you probably can. That would be something if you, I'll put that link to that video down in the description after today's live and give it a try and see. I already mentioned to you about the custom orders after one of your videos. It's a great idea, uh, but you'll be in it. I know that's the thing why, I, um, that's the one thing about doing custom orders is I only have so much time. So when I'm doing custom orders over on Etsy, I'm not making videos and I'm not filming tutorials for you. I'm, I get spread pretty thin, but if I was just to do that specific um, graphic, I think I could probably handle that one. 
and I would make the time and prioritize the time for it because I know if I can get them made for you guys uh, and you could do them um, on some DIY projects, then I could help you make some extra money. If you could make some little personalized Christmas ornaments uh, for the holiday season, I would love to do that. So I think that might be something. And I also have my daughter, Kirsten, that helps me out over on Etsy. So between the two of us, I think I could probably tackle doing some one personalized graphic. I'll let you know. I'll keep you updated on that though. Uh, PowerPoint works, so slides on the iPad should. Yeah, I, I think it probably will work if you go into Google Docs on your iPad. Yes, if you want to use these outside when you're all done, seal them up with an outdoor polyacrylic sealer. Uh, there's two different, different formulas to the polyacrylic. There's the indoor and the outdoor. And so if you're making a sign for out in the garden and you want it to weather out in the elements really well, Make sure you're buying the outdoor formula um, and seal it all up front, back, and sides. Because if you've got a sign, you know, that's hanging like this, the water is gonna go in behind too. So make sure you're sealing it up really well if it's gonna be outside. If it's not, then you're fine just with the interior. Now the polyacrylic can get pretty pricey, but for your initial investment, but I, it goes a long, long way. So the first initial, uh, you know, paying for it is like, a, I think a container of, you know, the quart here in Canada, I think it's almost $30, but I have bought them and they will last me almost up to six months and I make a lot of graphics. So if you uh, are looking to get some polyacrylic sealer, don't be intimidated by the price because it does go a really long way. You don't need very much. Um, the smaller ones would make cute, easy keychains. That's exactly what I was thinking too. And I was actually, I don't have any keychain findings, but I was thinking the same thing. Uh, and, and again, that would turn it into a really great seller too. You could go on to um, eBay or uh, Amazon and get some findings to turn these into keychains. Add some pretty beads. That would be really great. And if you guys make any of these, I would love the inspiration. So send me pictures over on Facebook or Instagram, and I'd love to see what you're making and creating. And also if you're, last week, my, I did a live last week, and I had mentioned if you're having issues, send me pictures. And I, as soon as I have a look at it, I can tell probably where you're going wrong or what's happening. And I actually had about 10 or 15 people send me pictures and I guided them along and it was fun to um, help each other out. And, and uh, most of the time I just look at, I looked at the picture and I knew right away what they were doing. I gave them the answer and sent them on their way and they all got it resolved. So that's an option too. If you're making something and you're struggling a little bit, send me pictures over there and I'm more than happy to help you out. Drill a hole in both sides and make it work as a label. See, you guys are, you guys, it's so nice when we put all of our heads together because sometimes you get in a tunnel vision with a project, right? And I'm like, ornaments, it's only ornaments. And now I've learned keychains, or it could be a label um, or a sign. Like, there's so many different things that you can do with these. Uh, you could drill a hole in each side and then put a nice little rivet and attach it to like a, um, a wooden box, so many ideas. I get overwhelmed. Only so many hours in the day too to, to craft and create all these things. Uh, I wanted to be sure, you said the graphic transfer works with laser printer and not inkjet. Okay, so no, this, this transfer technique will work with both types of printers. It will work with a laser printer and it will also work with an inkjet printer but there are some differences. The laser printer, well, like these, these are all laser printer, are really easy to do. The paper rubs off really easy. The transfer is really easy. And if you're doing a lot of these and you want, like you're turning it into a little bit of a side business, invest in a laser printer because the time that you can do these is cut in half compared to using an inkjet printer. When you're using an inkjet printer to do this technique, you have to go very slow because the ink wants to rub off. 
If you rub too hard, you're gonna rub the ink off also. So what your end result is a little bit of a, a lighter graphic transfer than with a laser printer and um, you might have the tendency for it to smear a little bit more, but it can be done. So don't think that you're out of the woods, um, you know, you're out of being able to do this project if you only have an inkjet printer because you can make it work. It's just gonna have to, you're gonna have to have a little bit more patience and a little bit more time and uh, it'll work fine for you also. I do have a couple videos on my channel comparing the inkjet and the laser printer and I made signs and put them side by side so you can see the difference. I'll put that video uh, down below in the description after this and you can check that out and you can see the difference because there is a little bit but not a whole lot and it will work for you. Um, Huron County, hello. Hello Deidre and everyone. Northern California, I've used inkjet with the packing tape and surprisingly the tape is still sticky and it adhered to the wood. Paper comes off easier when rubbing. So somebody did the pack gizmo, I'm sorry, and I know you're, I, I'm unsure what your first name is there. I know that's just your handle. Um, so somebody did use the inkjet printer with the packing tape transfer and it did work for them. So maybe you could try that out too. Do a little bit of trial and error. I've never had any luck with the inkjet printer and the packing tape, but um, it's such a fun technique, especially if you're into junk journaling to make them with the packing tape. Glad I asked. Do you ever spray water or lightly try soaking the paper with a sponge, letting it sit a bit? Does it help with removing the paper at all? Okay, so here's my thoughts on that. I see a lot of people try this technique and they completely soak the paper or they lay a cloth over it and let it soak in. So here's my issue with that. It reactivates the Mod Podge and makes it want to come off easier. Uh, you don't want to put too much water on it because Mod Podge is a glue. And what happens when you put water on glue and you let it sit? It softens it and it uh, makes it peel off easier. So I don't like to completely soak it or lay a cloth on it because if you're having bits and pieces rub off, that might be your issue is because you're wetting it too much, the Mod Podge is getting activated and it's rubbing off with the paper. Uh, gotcha, makes sense, yep, exactly. And I'm just working away here, getting all of these done. Where is everybody from? Everybody that's in here, let me know where you're watching from. And uh, it's fun after this is all over to go back and see we've got people from all over the world that are popping in and watching. A lot of my lives I do this technique because that seems to be what people have the most struggles with and the most uh, questions about. So I always, um, I think it's a lot nicer to do a live and have you guys in real time come in and ask me these questions and help you out than trying to write me a comment on YouTube or on any other social media and type it out and um, answer your questions because here I can be very specific and I can show you exactly what I'm doing. So, so you can see how nice and clean these come out. I love this one, dream big, so nice. Okay, here's a thinner sl uh, shutter, shutter slot. That's hard to say fast. <laughs> um, hot and muggy in Ohio. Yes, and we got Kansas and we got Pennsylvania, Tennessee. It's hot and humid here, miserable. It has been really miserable here uh, the last couple of days. Um, super hot and uncomfortable. Our AC has been running like crazy. And my son and daughter-in-law had, um, if you've been following along, you know that I'm a grand, a brand new grandma. They had a baby a couple weeks ago. And um, so they're right in newborn stage. And this heat for them has been so awful. They do have air conditioning in their house, but still the baby, you know, your baby is sensitive to it and she's nursing. So the heat doesn't help when you're trying to nurse and all of this kind of stuff. So they're having a bit of a struggle over there with this new one and this heat. So I'm, I'm really waiting for this heat wave to lift. So it's easier on them too. 
miserable in Arkansas. You guys that are all down in those southern states, I don't even know how you do it. You have so much heat month after month. We only have, really, we only have heat for July and August and sometimes into September. We don't have a really long season with a lot of heat. So you guys are real troopers for putting up with the heat month after month. There, this one's nice. I must have painted, I think I painted this one with a different color paint underneath. There's a little bit of green that's poking through and I like the look of that. So that's another thing you can layer um, different colors too and make them look a little bit more rustic. I like that one. Here's another one that has a little bit of green in it too. I'm gonna do this one. Um, the wedding, uh, the wedding is to slightly soak the paper to rub off. You do not want so much water to affect the Mod Podge or laser print. Yeah, exactly. You don't want to put too much on because it's going to reactivate it. Have you made any Christmas stickers around wording? Hope that makes it. Yes, I have. Check in my Etsy store, type in Christmas, and I think I have four or five different sheets of just words uh, for Christmas, for the holiday season, that you can do a project like this with. I should put it uh, together another couple cu couple words, uh, sheet words for that too, but there are some already listed over there that you can check out. And like I said before, if you guys are a Patreon member and you're in my Etsy store looking at graphics, don't forget your coupon, your 70% off coupon. And if you're a channel member, make sure you're using your 50% coupon because it just makes your crafting cheaper and you don't have to spend as much money on materials, especially if you're doing a lot of these. Yeah, I like the green on this one too. It just kind of peeks through. Perfect. Keep calm. Let's do a keep calm. Okay. We're gonna, you can see, I just do like a couple swipes just to wipe it. Start in the middle and just rub off. Now, I know I've, um, I love to ask my friends and family, or especially if you have any friends that are in the construction business or are renovators, ask for them to save all their scrap bits and pieces of wood. Lumber is expensive. You don't wanna have to go to Home Depot or Lowe's or your local hardware store and buy lumber if you don't have to. There's so much wood out there that just gets thrown in a dumpster. So if you ask around, you might be surprised with how much wood shows up on your um, front step because I don't pay, I, I don't even remember the last time that I bought wood. I just have enough friends that know that I'll use it and they bring it to me and I make another project. So it's a great way to keep your costs down too if you're a reseller and you don't have that expense. There's a nice one. Okay, so I think what I'm gonna do, because I'm gonna show you this. This this is actually a piece of um, pallet wood, free pallets. If you find pallets, cut them up, turn them into signs. They also sell really well. Hot and humid in Oakville, but I love it. Doesn't last long in Ontario, does it? No, it doesn't last very long here in Ontario. So we kind of embrace it and enjoy it because we know it's going to be here and gone very fast. So piece of palette wood, I actually painted with some black chalk paint and then I put on a turquoise chalk paint, distressed it all around the edges and start in the middle. And I'm gonna show you what I did with this one because this is a little, bit of twi a little bit of a twist on that same graphic that I used. And you can see, once you get practiced at this, how fast you can, you can do this. I mean, when you're first starting off, it's gonna take some time. You're gonna have to get the, and I'm not rubbing hard. Like I, I have a lot of people that say they have arthritis in their fingers and it, you know, they're worried about being able to do it. I'm not, it, I'm not putting a really hard pressure on this paper. If you've wet it under enough, um, it rolls right up underneath your fingers and it's not that hard. But so what I did on this one is I just took a piece of one, two, three, four of those words and stuck it on this piece of pallet wood. And it looks really nice too. What I would do with this, you can put a hanger on the back or you can drill a hole in each corner, hang some twine from it, and that would turn into a little bit of a bigger ornament. That would be nice. 
Now I'm showing you this because I usually recommend, especially if you're just starting, um, doing this on a white painted surface because you, the, the outline of the Mod Podge blends in better. Once you get the knack of it, once you get better at it and you can get the feel of rubbing all of the paper off, you can start doing a little bit of color underneath and um, make it work for you. So I'm just gonna show you, I'll do a corner right here. Dip my finger in just a little bit. You can feel underneath. Like when I'm rubbing right here, there's no more paper coming up, I can feel it. As soon as I go over here, you can feel the paper rolling up. So that's how you know that you've gotten it. But see how this really has blended in well. You don't really see the outline of the Mod Podge that much. So that's the trick is making sure you're not putting on too much Mod Podge or you're gonna see the outline of it. You just need a little bit, it'll still transfer. And then you can do it on some colored paint. If you are uh, reselling, you have to be a little bit careful though um, with doing too many funky colors. I find if I'm reselling, I stick to really neutral colors because everybody can buy a white ornament, but not everybody is going to have turquoise in their house. So I'll do a few of these just for a pop of color and fun, but don't do a whole bunch of them in different colors because you'll find, I find anyways myself, um, they don't sell as well. But it is always nice every once in a while to get out of the box of everything being white and beige and white and beige and do a pop of color. So I wanted to show you guys how you can do it on a white or on a colored base and how you can also use three, four, five words on a bigger piece of wood instead of just turning them into ornaments. So this is working pretty good. Now you can see I had a little imperfection right here in the wood and my graphic right there has rubbed off. That's completely normal. That's gonna happen. You're never ever gonna have a completely perfect transfer. And if you do, then you're lucky, lucky. Um, I salvage from our four neighborhood renovation projects, pallets, deck wood, fence projects. Yeah, exactly, ask around. Can't believe how life gets in the way of crafting, but hello, we got somebody here from, we got Connie here from Pittsburgh, welcome. Must have missed a step. Is there a Mod Podge, is there Mod Podge over the chalk paint? And then graphic, yes. So we're doing, I don't have, well I, oh shoot, here. Um, so you're doing paint, then you're putting Mod Podge on your graphic, and then you're putting it on your project and then you're gonna let it sit for the 24 hours. So that's the steps to those. Almost done this one. I love turquoise, love, love, love turquoise. If you guys have been around here for a long, long time, you saw that I had a uh, cabinet in my kitchen painted turquoise for a lot of years. It was kind of the focal point of my kitchen. And then at, after Christmas this year, I decided to switch it, um, switch it up and I painted it like a sage green and every once in a while I miss my turquoise. So there you go. Now all of these, once they're all done, um, I'll take them out to my shed and I'll seal them up with my polyacrylic sealer. You can seal them up with Mod Podge, but I don't care for the uh, look as much. <coughs> Okay. <coughs> okay. Is there a way to do different colors? Would colored letters Mod Podge the same way? Yes, exactly, they will. And if you wanted to switch up these colors, um, Take a paintbrush, paint over them. This is like a stencil and you can use a different color and paint over them if you don't wanna have the black letters. So that's another option that you can play around with too. Where are the best places to, fin to sell your finished projects? So there's a couple ways that um, you can sell your projects. A lot are just locally on your local marketplace. That's where I have really good luck. 
Sorry, everyone, it's really hot in here, so I'm drinking my water away here. Um, Facebook Marketplace, a fantastic place to sell. And sometimes when I'm selling on Marketplace, I'll group. Um, like I might take a bunch of these and group them together and sell them as a set of three or four. And they do really well. So Facebook Marketplace. You can also sell on Etsy. Now here in Canada, our shipping is very expensive. So the Etsy option for us, for me anyways, is not viable because it's just way too expensive to ship something and make any money. So I don't do anything on Etsy. And another thing that you can do is um, craft fairs or seasonal craft fairs that you have around Christmas or fall or Easter you can that are at your local schools or town halls. Um, you can also, uh, what other options are there? Uh, if you have a booth, you can sell in your booth. And family and friends. Um, so many options. Another thing that you can do is if you have a local store, like if you're in a little village or a town, go to the store and ask if they would be interested in maybe doing something wholesale. You can make your signs, sell them to them at a wholesale price, and then they can price them however they want and they can sell them. And you don't need to worry about it again. That's a really great option. Or you can sell to them on commission and then when they sell the sign in the store, then you will get a, a portion of the commission from them from the store. So a lot of that is just putting on your shoes and letting yourself uh, be known out in the community what you're making and what you're doing and going to the store and talking with the owner and, and showing them. I always put together a little box of what I'm making and um, so they have they can see and maybe do something that way. But I uh, myself, I find that Facebook Marketplace works the best for reselling in my area. Of course, every area is going to be different. Uh, thanks, Connie, glad you're enjoying. Turquoise and blues are perfect for nautical signs. Yes, nautical signs, that turquoise, this turquoise is perfect for nautical signs. Um, very happy with, yes, I'm glad you're enjoying this technique because it is fantastic. And this is regular, um, regular computer paper. And you want to make sure that you're using the cheapest computer paper that you can find. Uh, you don't want it too thick. If you're trying to use a really thick computer paper, then you can imagine you are going to have a, a lot of paper to rub off. So the thinner the paper, the less there is to rub off the better the outcome of this transfer technique. Okay, so I think I'm gonna put this one aside because I wanna show you how I'm gonna finish off. Um, I love your videos and the fact that you actually answer questions. What would you use to print your, what do you use to print your sayings? I use my laser printer. I have a brother laser printer that I've had for years and I abuse it. Oh my goodness, I abuse it. I have done hundreds of prints on it and it's worked really well. I have uh, one that I really like. I'll put that link down below in the description for that type of um, printer. Okay, so let's finish one of these off. I'm gonna show you what I like to do. Um, I just thought of some local stores that would be good options. That's great, Jay, yeah. Just go to, a, like if you have a little gift store in your area um, pop in with a little box of stuff that you're making and show them and open up that conversation and you might be surprised even if they just do it on a commission basis um, it's a great way to make a little bit of extra money and you might be surprised if they're a busy little store they might sell a bunch of stuff and uh, do well for you this is what I like to do I just have some little wooden beads uh, I look for them in the thrift store um, or you can grab them on Amazon or I deconstruct. Sometimes I'll go to the jewelry section and I'll take pieces of uh, jewelry apart for the beads. Lots of, lots of different ways to do this, but I've just kind of tied the twine on the bottom. I'm gonna knot so that bead's not gonna roll around. You have a nice bead. Then you're gonna tie the top. There we go. 
trim this up so it looks nice. This is where you can just kind of get really creative and put your own spin or twist on it, but it's not cute. And you've got your little hanger. If the, I mean, you, it doesn't have to be at Christmas. This can be anytime. You can hang it from a gift bag. You can uh, give it to, uh, you can hang it. I, I just, there's so many different ways. Uh, weddings, you can attach it on little gifts. Um, and if you can learn how to customize, then that's a great option also. But see how easy it is, isn't that pretty? We'll do another one here. Time to hit the like button. Yeah, if you're here, everybody, thanks Terry for shouting that out. If you're here, leave a comment, hit the like button. It all helps my channel and um, gets my video pushed to new crafters so we can have more friends here. So I really appreciate it. For I appreciate you guys all for all the support. It's just fantastic here. My YouTube community is wonderful. Oh, I got that kind of crooked here. I'm talking and not making sure these are the same length. And just make sure when you're drilling your hole that you're gonna be able to get a double twine through the hole. And put a little knot. And push this through your little bead. And of course you can paint your beads too. I actually have some beads in here that are whitewashed. Actually, let's use one of those. Nice whitewashed. Did you guys see my videos on how to paint beads fast? A really fun little hack. Um, I'll put the link to that video down in the description because you can paint your beads in a quarter of the time with that little hack. Works fantastic. Uh, thank you for providing ways for us to make some money with low cost items. That is exactly what my channel is all about. Well, number one, I love just sharing my love for crafting. But number two, I saw when I was making my channel, this, um, there was like nothing out there. There was lots of people that were showing stuff that they were making, but I saw there were so many people that were looking to find a way to make some extra cash, some extra money. Times have been tough, especially since COVID, where people have lost their jobs or they have, um, you know, had to cut back. So I thought, you know, I, there's, I have so many ways of um, different techniques of crafts that I was selling and were selling well for me. So I thought I want to share those and be able to have my other crafting friends um, learn how to do these too, because I'm telling you, even if you do a few of these and you can put an extra hundred bucks in your pocket at the end of the month, that's your cell phone bill um, or a little bit of groceries. So and just by doing little projects like this, when you can figure out the techniques and how to make them look nice, it doesn't take long to get that hundred bucks in your pocket. So I'm always glad to share what works for me and of course, like always, put your own spin on it. Put your own personality into your crafts. I'm just showing you the techniques and um, not every area is going to have the distressed look be popular. So just do what works for you, but use the techniques and um, guide you along. Would you ever consider turning your graphics into a stencil form for us to purchase? Uh, I. I don't have the time to do that. Um, I and I, I have a love-hate relationship with my Cricut, so I only pr pull out my Cricut if I absolutely have to because I don't know. I, it works sometimes for me, and it takes me twice as long to even just to turn the darn thing on. So for me to do graphics and cut and cut them into stencils and then mail them, it would be so much work for me to do. I wish I had. I need to have three of me some days because. Between my daughter and I, um, we're, we're both full time working on my channel here and uh, it's a lot. So don't think I could probably do that. Could you possibly, just a second, uh, 85 watching and only 58. Thanks, Jay. I got my number one supporter here, Jay's um, getting my likes here. I appreciate that. Thank you. Could you possibly do more lake nautical related things in your Etsy store? I sure can actually. I'm looking for some graphics for my Patreon club for next week. So maybe that's what I'll do. I'll put together some nautical ones and uh, that will go out to my Patreon members next week. 
Maybe I'll do that this afternoon. I'll design some nautical ones. I haven't done any of those in a while and they're always lots of fun. If you ever have any ideas for graphics, send me a message and uh, I can design something. I love, I think in my previous life I must have been a graphic designer because I love designing graphics. Love, love, love. What price would you put on these three white tags? Okay, so I may, I usually get five bucks a piece for these. So five, 10, 15, 20, you got 20 bucks right here from four slats out of a shutter that I think I found in the dump. The beads, um, uh, beads I got, I've had these forever. I don't have very much money in these at all. So if you got 20 bucks out of these, all four, that's a pretty good profit margin. Um, and if you're in an area, you'll have to, you know, you'll know your area, what you can sell these for, but some areas you might even be able to get up to seven, $8 a piece for them. My area is a bit more re uh, rural. So $5 is about max that I can get for these. Um, thanks, Sabrina. I'm glad that you're enjoying graphics with phrases for teachers. That's a great idea. I should have put some of those together for the year and school, but I can do some of those. I love and appreciate how generous you are with your tried and tested, trusted instructions and help us make some extra cash and give as gifts. Yeah, I mean, a lot of, I appreciate that. Thanks for the kind words, Sue. Um, I mean, a lot of these also, you, you might not all be looking to make some extra cash. You just like crafting. But another thing with all of these techniques, and I don't talk about it as enough, enough is all of these can be turned into little gifts and who doesn't like to give a nice homemade gift? So it's not always about making extra cash and it's also about maybe, you know, giving this to a girlfriend and putting it on a bottle of wine and as a nice a little uh, thoughtful gift. And it's more personal, it doesn't cost you a bunch of money and I'm sure they would appreciate something like that just as much as they would if you went out and spent $100 on something. So that's the other thing. It's nice to learn these techniques to make really nice gifts. I'm starting to see your sense of humor in some of your items in your store. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I have a little bit of uh, my sense of humor pop through. I am, um, my husband is very redneck, very redneck. So uh, I, I sometimes, I. I, he rubs off on me a little bit, so I get a little bit of a twist of humor from that. <laughs> there we go. Just rubbing these off. Now this live is going a little bit extra long, but I'm, I just wanna get these done. And if you guys wanna hang out, then I'll just keep going and I'll keep working away and you guys can um, keep asking me questions. And if you're just joining here, uh, then let me know where you're watching from. We have people that are following here from every corner of the world and it's so fun to see where you're all from and watching from. See how easy this rubs off? Actually, a lot of these, um, I haven't had much uh, of the graphics rubbing off. These have been working really well. Maybe humidity is making a difference. It's making the Mod Podge stick better go here I like this one have faith and this is a bigger slat I think that's nice make these up and if you have a gift that you've bought for somebody you can put it in a gift bag with a whole bunch of tissue paper and you can hang hang one of these tags off the um, end of the bag and that looks really nice too Tags for wine bottles, another great marketing idea, 100%. Stick these in uh, on a bottle of wine and perfect gift idea. And everybody is looking for unique, affordable gift ideas and this would work out really great. Let's put another whitewash bead on here. I appreciate how direct and simple you are with your answers. Thanks. I always, when I first started watching YouTube, before I even had my channel, I was watching a lot of um, crafting channels. And the one thing that I always came away from was uh, just get to the point. We just want to know how to craft. We don't want to know 
everything about your life. We just want to craft. We want to know how to do the technique. You show us how to do the technique and then go on. And that's what I said to myself when I was starting my channel. That's going to be my focus. I want to not waste people's time. I want to show them how to do it, chat a little bit, and then um, and move on. And, and that seems to have worked really well for me. And that's one of the compliments that I get a lot is um, how straightforward and direct I am with my channel. And, and I'm glad because that's what I strive to do is I can, I might make a YouTube video that's eight minutes. I might film a YouTube video and when I'm finished filming, it's a half an hour long. And by the time I'm done editing it, I've gotten it down to eight minutes because I've taken all the fluff out. You guys don't want to see all that extra little stuff. You just want to see me crafting and um, getting it done. Central Minnesota. Hi, Lacey. Honestly, I think my five and seven year old boys could make these. 100% they could. Yes seeing if I got any other different beads. I don't have much selection of different beads other than these whitewashed ones and the plain ones. Definitely you could have your kids doing these. This is a great little project for that. Where's the link for painting beads? I haven't had a chance to put that in. I'll put it down in the um, description after uh, and you can follow that video after this one. I can't leave this here or else I would I would put the link there for it. And I don't know if you can go into my channel and if you can search in the search bar how to paint beads fast, it might show up. Norway, Ingrid from Norway. Hello, Sonia, thank you. Absolutely appreciate a down-to-earth creator who can convey, teach, create, and as effortlessly as you seem to do. Thank you very much for that compliment. Uh, these little signs can be added to a keychain, a book bag, backpack. I can see painting some red and putting Merry Christmas or other Christmas sayings and adding to gift bags or Christmas trees. 100%. So many ideas. And that's why I wanted to pop in today and, and show you these because um, I, you could paint these red and do a long Christmas tree and then do a nice Christmas theme bead. I, it's, there's so many different ways that you can put a twist on these. What I usually do is I'll put a whole bunch of these together, put them in a nice little box or tin, make a little sign for five, seven dollars a piece, and they all sell really well. So what do we want to finish up with here? We've done lots of tags. Let's finish this sign because I want to see how this one turns out. And Book uh, backpacks, book bags, another great idea. Yes, you could tie these on to your backpack on a little um, zipper pull, zipper pulls. Ugh. You could hang them. I wonder if you could hang them from your rear view mirror in your car. I don't know if it would obstruct your, eh. anyway, so many different ideas of what you could do with them if you used even smaller pieces of wood. Put a hole on the other side and make labels for drawers. I know somebody earlier had said that and I hadn't thought about that. I think that would be a great idea. And you could do um, so many, like this one right here, you could put on a drawer because it's bigger. Put another hole here, put two little rivets on it. That would look really nice. Okay, we're just gonna work away now. So this is this right here. This here is this here. And I've just cut it, as you can see, to fit that board, cut this section out. Instead of making it into the tags, I've taken the whole piece and done it as a, a strip. And this is just a piece of scrap palette wood from an old palette that I cut up into a whole bunch of signs. That's another way of getting some free wood. Um, ooh, a small one would be sweet from the rear view mirror with, okay guys, with a little essential oil dabbed on the back. How clever is that? There we go. There's another idea. I wonder if the, um, do you think the essential oil would soak into the wood? I don't see why it wouldn't and it would probably smell really nice. Great idea. That is a great idea. See, this is why I love these lives. You guys have so many fantastic ideas. We put our heads together and it's amazing what we can figure out. 
This and this platform here on YouTube is um, such a great community platform. I, I also have a very very large following over on um, Facebook, but the community over there is so much different. A lot of them they're just fed my my uh, content, and they're not necessarily crafters. And oh my goodness, dumpster fire! You should read some of my comments over on Facebook. Some people are so mean. And it doesn't bother me. I just kind of let it roll off my back. And and I always look at it as any engagement is good engagement. But holy doodle, what people write over on Facebook are mean. So mean about some of the projects that I'm doing. And I never, ever get that vibe here on Facebook. It's such a wonderful, or on, on um, YouTube. Such a wonderful community here. And I appreciate all of you guys. Could you please show how you do the Mod Podge part? Um... I did that at the very beginning and I don't know. Okay, let's try. So I have this one, it's not painted. I would ideally paint this with some white chalk paint, but I can't today because I don't have uh, paint or the time, but I'll show you what I did now. So this would have been painted white and then I've got my graphic. You're just gonna use Mod Podge Matte you're just going to lightly put the Mod Podge on. If you guys missed this and you're joining in halfway through, you can go back and watch the replay and you can see it all really in depth, what I did. I'll just show you quick here. Just put a light amount on, you don't need very much. And then flip it over. Place it on your tag. And then Make sure there's no bubbles and wrinkles. Now, like I said, I, I usually like to do this on a chalk painted surface. This will work on raw wood, but it's not as nice. Um, but that's what you do for this step to get to this step to get to rubbing the paper off. Um, raw wood could absorb the, yeah, that's what I'm thinking, the raw wood, yeah. Drop into bead and would soak into the string. Ooh, there's another good idea. Put your essential oil right in the little hole here of your bead. It would soak through the string and it would smell really nice. Oh, fantastic. I moderate, facilitate on other channels to help keep the mean lower on YouTube. I don't have any mean here on YouTube, honestly. It's so, so good. But Facebook, oh my goodness. If I had a moderator over there, they would be working full time. I'm telling you, so bad. You're very fortunate because there are dumpster fires here too. No, I don't. I don't have any here. I, my community here on YouTube is really fantastic. I once in a while get somebody that snaps in a, a mean comment. But honestly, I don't even have to reply to those because before I even get to it, I have followers that go back and they comment on my behalf and they just chew them up and spit them out. So it's so funny to um, see the support that I have here on, on Facebook. Uh, I keep saying Facebook. Here on YouTube, it's really great. Uh, so the graphic should always be backwards on the paper. Yes, when you're doing this technique, the uh, has to, it has to be reversed. If you are trying to do it without reversing the text, then this method won't work. Your, your lettering will be backwards. If you're buying these graphics on... Um, that's on Etsy, out of my Etsy store. I'll show you right here. One of the files will already be reversed. So you can see, see how this one's already reversed? So when you flip it this way, it's the right way on your sign or whatever you're making. So you have to reverse it. But like I said, on my Etsy store, one of those files is already reversed, ready to go. Um, for pet lovers like signs too. Yes, I have quite a few pet lover signs in my Etsy store. Oh, that's a great idea. I don't see the point of being mean. If you don't like it, don't watch. 100% Natalie, I get it. And I mean, sometimes on Facebook, I'll have people that'll write a whole paragraph of why they hate what I just made. And I'm like, Girl, if you put that energy into something else productive, you could change the world. Don't be worrying about my jewelry box that I upcycled that, that you were really mean about. That's not going to change the world too much. But good in, any engagement is good engagement. And I just thank them and move on. 
no need for mean. I get, I get that. Okay, so this is coming along really good. I like this one. So isn't that pretty? I love turquoise. I think I might have to keep this one. This one might go in my shed. Very inspirational. This would be great to give to a teenage girl. You could gift wrap this, something like this, put it in a nice bag with some um, nice tissue paper, and then you could get, let's see here, this little tag here, put it on the outside of the bag, and you've got a fantastic homemade gift that I'm sure anybody would appreciate. So this will get, um, everything here is going to get a coat of polyacrylic sealer. I like using matte finish. And they're gonna be ready to sell. Thank you so much. Would acrylic paint work? I've heard you mention chalk paint. So Lacey, you can use acrylic paint, but I find it doesn't work as good as chalk paint. The chalk paint seems to be more absorbent and it lets the Mod Podge soak into your project better. I have used acrylic paint. It does work, but if you're just starting off, don't start with acrylic paint. You might have a little bit more of a tricky time. I can make it work because I've done so many of them, so I know the feel of it. Um, but for beginners, you might want to try your first couple signs with the chalk paint and then venture into the acrylic. Um, I'm looking to make information instruction signs on my community garden. People really want to learn my gardening techniques. Yeah, great idea. You could do that in Canva. If you're handy with Canva, you could design those ones. Uh, I need a poop deck one for the cat litter room. <laughs> That's a cute one to do too. Can you do this technique on material? You missed my video from last week. I did a technique on how to transfer onto material. So go back in my playlist and you can check out and see how I did it on material. It turned out really great. Sure thing, thank you. Okay, so I'm gonna sign off because I'm pretty sure my phone is probably going to die soon because we've been on here for a long time. So thanks for hanging out. I really appreciate everybody's support here. And if you wanna try this graphic, like I said before, it's available in my Etsy store. If you're a Patreon member, we love Patreon. I have so many fantastic friends over there for the graphic club, $6.99 a month. Plus you get a 70% off discount code for all of the other graphics in my store. You're sent all of the new graphics every week in your inbox to craft with if you wanna join up for that or you can just join my channel here on YouTube and you'll get a 50% off discount code for all of my graphics in my Etsy store. So thank you so much for the um, hanging out with me. We will see you in the next live. Have a great day, everybody, and take care. We'll chat soon.